In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up an Amazon account with Odoo. We are in V15. We have our database open with Amazon installed. We have a few tabs open right now. We have our Amazon seller account. We have our Amazon seller account product list. We have the Odoo configurations in our documentations for V15, the Amazon connector. So the Amazon connector is inside of our sales application. The first thing we wanna do is activate developer mode. I am already in developer mode. In order to activate developer mode, you can scroll all the way down and there'll be a button here that says activate developer mode. Because we are in developer mode, this button says deactivate developer mode. Then we wanna to go to sales. We'll scroll all the way down to the Amazon sync. We're gonna go into our Amazon marketplaces. We can view all of our marketplaces here. This is static information that you can only see in developer mode. We can go back. We can look at our default products. These default products are products that are created by the system in order to map for non-existing products. So when you when a sale order comes in for a product that you don't have mapped to anything inside of Odoo, it becomes a generic Amazon sale and the same goes for shipping. Next, we can go into our Amazon accounts. In order to set up an account, we wanna click create. We're gonna click, uh, first we're gonna set the name. So we'll say Kevin store. We're gonna select the sign in marketplace, which is amazon.com. Now we need a seller ID and an authorization token. In order to get these, we need to go to our Amazon seller account. We'll be on the dashboard here. We can click the menu item, go down to partner network and click on manage or manager apps. We're gonna authorize a new developer. From here, we need to set the developer name and the developer ID. In order to get these, refer to the documentation here. Inside, this is V15 documentation for the Amazon connector. Once again, uh, this is about the middle of the page. We're gonna select the developer name, which is ODUSA for the United States. And we're going to select the developer ID. We'll click next. We'll agree to the terms. Click next again. And this will give us our marketplace ID as well as our seller ID and auth token. What we need for Odoo is the seller ID. So we'll copy that. Let's bring this over here. Seller ID. And we need our auth token. This will allow us to connect. So now, before we save that, we'll just hit next here so that it finalizes our creation. And we'll click save. Just give that a second to load. Let's make sure we copy that correctly. And that is all good and set up. We can test our credentials. All right, everything is up and running. It took a couple of seconds to activate. Now in our marketplaces, we see that we have our ca.com.mx and .com all connected. Under our order follow-up, we see the default salesperson, which will be set on our Amazon orders, which is administrator. The sales team, which is Amazon. And you can configure this and change the sales team if you'd like, as well as the salesperson. By default, we will sync all of our orders, I believe once an hour, we can double check that. Um, and our last sync is down here. So it just tried to sync. We don't have any orders to sync at the time. You can manually, if you're in debug mode, sync orders or sync pickings when you'd like. All of your Amazon offers, which are um, your products that you're selling, will populate here, as well as your orders. There's one more thing here, which is our Amazon FBA. Right now, we are only utilizing FBM. But if you were utilizing Amazon Fulfilled by Amazon, there'd be an option here to select a warehouse. So I'm going to go into Studio just to show you that field. Under order follow-up, you'll see our stock location. Right now we have it set as warehouse slash Amazon. 
you can set it as a location within your warehouse or you can set it as a brand new warehouse, which is what I recommend. If you had multi-company, you would be able to select the company that this is this Amazon account is associated to. So we'll close out of studio. Now we have our Amazon connected. I'm gonna go into another account that we have created with Amazon orders. We have three orders that came in and one offer set up. When we click into the offers, we'll see our Amazon marketplace, the product inside of Odoo, and the SKU inside of Amazon. So what happens here is our SKU gets connected to our product, which we're just simply mapping the data here. You can find your SKU inside of your Amazon account. So we don't need this anymore. Neither do we need this. And we'll look at our Amazon SKUs. So right now we have our jumbo paperclip set up. And you'll see that our jumbo paperclip SKU is this, which is mapped here. We can also add additional products. So we don't currently have our pencils mapped. So what we can do is create a new amazon.com marketplace. We'll select our pencil and we'll copy over the SKU from our pencil and we'll paste that in here. And now that's set up. So when the Amazon order comes in for a pencil, it will replace our Amazon sale with that pencil object. We can also view this in our seller central account that will bring up the entire page. And if we don't have a product mapped that we sell on Amazon, but we don't have it mapped in our Odoo account, what we what will happen is it will say product, Amazon sale, and it will say a SKU. And then you can replace that Amazon sale with the, the proper product. On the top right here, we see orders as well. So these are all the orders that have came in. If we take a look at this order, sales number three. We see one delivery and you'll see fulfilled by merchant. So I've canceled this order. So let's go to a different order. This one came in sales order number two. Keep in mind that this is a locked sales order. By default, it comes in as a locked sales order. You cannot edit or touch this order. All you can do is manage the delivery. So you'll see that our Amazon shipping came through as well as our jumbo paper clips. Amazon does not bring in taxes. So our connector does not bring in the taxes from Amazon. Instead, you will set the taxes on your product or you can do a manual journal entry for the, all the taxes collected in Amazon and hit to your tax received account. Now inside of our delivery, You'll see that we have this all set up. This was shipped through UPS, created the label, and this is automatically sent to Amazon once we confirm and ship out this order. There's something to note here. This carrier says UPS2. In order for this to send accurately to Amazon, this carrier needs to say either UPS, USPS, FedEx, or any other shipping method you're using, but it cannot say like UPS2, cannot say UPS ground shipping. It needs to just say simply UPS in the case of using UPS. Or if it's USPS, it would just simply say USPS. That way this accurately gets sent to Amazon and the order is marked as shipped in your Amazon seller account. If for some reason, because our sales order is locked and it generates a delivery from the default warehouse that you have set up, what you can do if you need to change the warehouse is you can cancel this or this delivery, then duplicate it. And then once you do that, you can change the warehouse to the proper warehouse you want to deliver from if it's separate from your original warehouse. Hopefully in future updates, we'll be able to deliver from multiple warehouses. But as of right now, that is the proper workaround. 
the next thing you want to note is that if this order, if we had fulfilled by Amazon setup, and this order was fulfilled by Amazon, there is nothing we need to do. This order would come in with a tag that says fulfilled by Amazon. No deliveries will be generated and all of the stock moves will happen behind the scenes. The inventory will be pulled from your Amazon warehouse location that you set up in your Amazon account or in your Odoo Amazon setup. And that inventory will be moved right into your partner location. You can view those stock moves by going to inventory, reporting, product moves. And you'll be able to see the product moving from, I'm sorry, if you go to uh, stock moves, and we'll delete these, and you'll see this, it will say warehouse or Amazon slash stock to partner location customers, depending on how you set up your warehouse. And again, that will happen all behind the scenes. There's nothing you need to do with that order. Of course, those all of those sales orders populate right into your sales account. So you can see all of your accounts here. If you wanted to filter just by Amazon orders, you can see if the Amazon reference is checked. So you'll look at orders, Amazon order ref is set. And you'll see only our Amazon orders. If we click into one of our orders and go to other info, you'll see that Amazon order ref populated right here, as well as our sales team of Amazon and our salesperson that we set up as administrator. If you wanted to, you can also search by sales team or group by sales team in order to differentiate between FBA and FBM orders. So that is the setup of Amazon. Um, we can just take a look quickly at our shipping methods in order for things to populate correctly. In this scenario, we're using Easy Post. We have the shipping method set as simply UPS. Even though this is UPS grounds, what we're technically using, um, we wanted to say UPS so that tracking number carries over right to Amazon. If you put your products in packages and have multiple shipping um, tracking numbers, that all works fine. It all gets sent over to Amazon. So no need to worry there. And that is it. Once you confirm a delivery, it gets updated in Amazon and you're all set to go. Keep in mind that cancellations and refunds have to be done manually. So if you want to cancel an order or an order was canceled in Amazon, you want to set that up to simply cancel that order. So that is all. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.